Hey everyone, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So before we get into today's video, um, I've had a few comments over the last several videos actually um, around my autofocus on my camera being terrible and it always jumps out of focus and stuff like that. So um, I appreciate that feedback and I have made some adjustments on my camera. So I'm hoping I'm in focus and the focus is going to be much more stable throughout the video. So let me know if it is. If it isn't, I'll keep trying to figure out what to do to, uh, to fix that up. But um, all that said, the topic of today's video is all about potential future investments for Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. So um, the reason I want to get into that topic is I think a lot of people um, don't necessarily understand um, all that well some of the restrictions that Buffett now has in terms of making new investments in public companies. And um, that restriction really um, is due to his enormous success. <laughs> it's kind of um, a, a poor side effect of just growing into a massive, massive company. Um, and that side effect is basically the universe of potential investments for Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway has gotten smaller. So there are thousands of public companies in the US, um, but Buffett's strategy is to put a lot of money into his best ideas. Uh, and a lot of money at this point means an absolute bare minimum of probably about $5 billion. Um, if he wants to make a serious um, investment, it's probably north of 10 or $20 billion, like we saw with uh, Apple, which was more than that even again. Um, so when you wanna put that amount of money into a public company, and you also have these self-imposed restrictions of not wanting to own more than 10% of a business, and you also want them to still uh, have you know, a large enough market cap for you to be able to make those investments uh, when prices are down and in distress, all of those things sort of come together and really just shrink the entire universe of US public companies uh, down quite dramatically. By my calculations, it's probably less than 30 companies at this time, a sufficient size for Buffett to even consider investing in. So if we just do some basic maths on, on essentially how I got to that number, Buffett, um, when he's making a very, very serious investment, is looking at north of $10 billion. Um, he doesn't want to own more than 10% of the company, so that gives us an absolute bare minimum of $100 billion in market cap. Um, but with current prices being so high, which he's been quite open in saying that they are over the last few years, um, prices was, would have to come down quite dramatically for him to even think of making this investment. So um, <clears throat> let's say that you know, we, we have a company that um, has to be at $100 billion in distress. So let's say in normal trading times and market conditions like today, for example, their market cap is closer to $200 billion. So if the stock drops down 50%, it's still large enough for Buffett to make an investment. So um, that's how I arrive at my sort of $200 billion uh, minimum threshold and a number of about 28 or 30 US public companies. So um, I wanna get into some of the actual companies on that list and just give you some perspective on um, what companies Buffett probably understands quite well, which companies he definitely won't understand because they may be too technology heavy or something like that. Um, and that should hopefully give you some insights into um, what I personally think is probably on Warren Buffett's watch list. So uh, let's get straight into the list of companies and I hope you enjoy. Now, one thing I should mention is I am really just focusing on US companies here. Um, Buffett is not completely opposed to making investments outside of the US. Um, he's made investments in PetroChina, for example, over in China um, a few years ago. Um, although I think his preference certainly is keeping uh, most of his wealth in the US. And uh, it's just an area where he feels a lot more comfortable. So that's really why I'm focusing on uh, US public companies. They have the largest stock market in the world and that's where most of these big companies are anyway. Um, but I should probably just mention that th this list would expand uh, at least a little bit if you included other markets as well. Okay, so let's start working our way through this list. So the biggest company in the world in terms of market cap, this has been one that's jockeyed around a little bit between Apple and Microsoft lately. Apple is the largest company in the world at this point uh, in terms of market cap, in terms of the valuation. Um, and as many of you know, uh, Buffett already has a massive investment in Apple. So that is not one that's probably on the watch list uh, right now, I would think. 
um, but he'll probably never sell it. So um, that is Apple. Microsoft, this is an interesting one. I actually think Buffett could get his head around a lot of what Microsoft does. I think if you're looking at something like the Office products and the stickiness of sort of the overall operating system, I would be surprised if Buffett can't get his head around that. Um, you could argue that a lot of the cloud computing and so on, um, he will really struggle with. Um, but fundamentally, the, the operating systems and so on of Microsoft, I think Buffett could understand. And Microsoft was actually off the table for a very, very long period of time because of his friendship with Bill Gates. And also the fact that Bill Gates was on the board of Berkshire Hathaway for a long time, which he isn't now. So there are a couple of stocks like that and Microsoft is one of them where Buffett basically just said he wouldn't buy it because there's too much of kind of a conflict of interest, I guess, um, and potential for, you know, dramas to, to kind of come out of that. So Microsoft, I think he could understand it uh, enough to make a purchase, particularly if the price got low enough. Um, but it's probably not that it's probably still one he's going to take a pass on. Um, Amazon, which is the next biggest company I put into a fairly similar boat. So I think um, Buffett could understand a lot of what Amazon does uh, in terms of the online retail business. Again, where I think he would struggle would be um, the cloud computing and Amazon Web Services and, and that kind of side of the business. Um, Amazon is incredibly complicated at this point. They have so many different arms to their business. Um, but Berkshire Hathaway have actually been shareholders of um, Amazon for a little while now. It wasn't actually done by Buffett. It was done by either Ted or Todd or one of the guys in the office as Buffett refers to them as. Um, we don't know exactly who made that investment, but they did put roughly sort of nine or 10% of their portfolio in it from, from what I could gather at the time. So Amazon is definitely one uh, they will be keeping an eye on. Uh, Google, so Buffett and Munger have openly come out and said in the past that Google, uh, not buying Google was a mistake. This is a business they said, they've said that they understand they had um, their Geico insurance business paying for advertising through Google AdSense. They understood that Google had basically no incremental cost for every time they bought on a new uh, customer or, or ran a new ad um, and that the business was just absolutely gushing cash um, had low cost advantages in terms of worldwide advertising options. So if you're looking at, you know, Google ads versus newspapers and TV and radio, um, the online advertising is just so much cheaper and often much more effective because you can be very, very targeted in terms of um, who sees those ads and what their interests are and that sort of thing. So um, Google, they've openly come out and said it was a mistake. So if Google ever does get cheap, I see um, Birch Hathaway likely to load up the boat on that particular business. Uh, Alibaba, um, just the fact that it's a Chinese business and Amazon is available as an alternative. I don't see Berkshire making a particularly large investment, uh, if any, in Alibaba. Facebook, I don't see Buffett making an investment into Facebook. Um, I don't think he's a social media massive user. He's posted like three things on Twitter before or something, and I'm pretty sure someone else did it for him as well. So I don't think Facebook um, is going to be added to the portfolio anytime soon. Uh, the next one on the list is Berkshire Hathaway, um, and this gets into a very, very interesting topic of share buybacks. So for a little while now, Buffett has uh, had his stock trading below the minimum threshold of 1.3 times book value to buy back their own shares. And um, I was surprised to hear at the annual meeting earlier in the year that they hadn't done more buybacks um, with prices dropping down in March and that sort of thing. They basically said they're looking to conserve cash um, just because there's all the stuff going on that there is at the moment worldwide. Doesn't mean we can't also have a hurricane and that sort of stuff which would impact their insurance business. So they were being conservative in terms of keeping cash available. They have 130, 140 billion of it at this point, um, which you'd think would be enough, but they have um, slowed down the share buybacks. And I actually um, saw an interesting video posted, which I'll try to put a link to uh, down in the description somewhere. Um, I apologize to whoever made that video because I can't remember your name. Um, but basically they um, actually picked up an SEC filing and did some maths, which suggests Buffett may have actually done sort of a one or two percent of the all the shares outstanding kind of share buyback um that maths was done by looking at um buffett's donation actually to the bill and melinda gates foundation if you don't know he he donates some of his berkshire stock to that foundation every single year um 
And, and that SEC filing it had sort of his before and after holdings uh, in terms of percentage ownership of the company. And from that math, you can figure out the total shares outstanding and how many shares are publicly traded. And that number came out actually a lot lower than what it was just a few months ago. So that suggests there may have been some share buybacks. Um, I would love to see Berkshire buy back shares when they're cheap, like... Um, I kind of think they are at the moment, not financial advice or a recommendation, but I think they are cheaper than they historically have been right now. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of share buybacks. Now the, now the next three businesses to round out the top 10 are Visa, Johnson & Johnson and Walmart. And I think all three of those Buffett understands inside out. Um, he is an absolute beast at financial companies. Um, Visa is a relatively simple business in the financial sector as well. So I think he understands Visa inside out. Certainly one on his watch list that he would acquire um, if it got cheap enough, we've seen him make biz, uh, investments in businesses like American Express in the past. And it's, it's an interesting combination of kind of like a duopoly slash um, really strong brand and great economics um, all mixed into one. The unfortunate thing is that everyone knows that and they trade at a very high price. So um, I would definitely see Buffett potentially making an investment in Visa if it got cheap enough. Johnson & Johnson, um, consumer facing, he understands consumer products very, very well. Uh, and Walmart, so he, he has said that not investing in Walmart in the past was a mistake. I think he said that probably in the early 2000s at this point, but um, not much has changed in terms of the economics of that business. Um, and I still think that is one that would be firmly on his watch list. So I'm just gonna shoot through the rest of these sort of top uh, 30 or all the stocks above $200 billion in market cap um, and just give you a quick yes, no verdict in, th in terms of whether I think um, one, Buffett would understand the business and two, whether I think it um, is potentially investable, which, um, if it hits the first criteria and the business is not going completely downhill, it probably meets the second criteria as well. Um, but just to rattle through them to get a feel, so to let you get a feel for the businesses that are on here. Um, <clears throat> so next up, we've got Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. I think that's an obvious no. Mastercard is a yes. Procter and Gamble is a yes. J.P. Morgan is a yes. Tesla is a no. United Healthcare Group is a no. Home Depot is a yes. Intel and Nvidia are a no. Verizon, I think, is a maybe. Um, <clears throat> Netflix, I think, yes, you definitely understand that, but they have massively negative free cash flow, so I don't see anything happening with Netflix. Um, AT&T, similar boat, so they've had some real struggles recently, and although I think Buffett understands the business, I pretty unlikely, personally, I think, to see that one pop up. Um, Disney, hit by that all day long. Um, Pfizer, no. Adobe, no. Bank of America, he already owns it. PayPal, I think, yes. Coca-Cola, obviously, already has a massive position in it. Um, and that rounds it out. So those are literally all the companies in the entire United States that um, Buffett could have a large position in. So there's not very many of them, and that's really the core message I want to get across in this video. That is a massive advantage that we have as individual investors is we can invest in pretty much anything <laughs> unless um unless you're managing billions of dollars um and even if you're managing like one or two billion dollars that opens the world up so much more to you than um, Buffett, who is probably the most restricted investor in the world at this point in terms of his share scale and, and the businesses that uh, he could acquire large stakes in. So um, pretty interesting times, I think, by the very nature of them being large companies. Unfortunately for Buffett, they are, that means they're going to be very, very closely followed. And um, when things are closely followed, it means that they don't often get mispriced just kind of randomly. They, they're not like some micro cap that has a market cap of $30 million and it's just that no one follows it. And, you know, the business has been going great, but the price has been going sideways for a long time and it's gotten very cheap. You just don't have that happen with large cap stocks. You have, you know, 10 or 15 analysts following it very, very closely. Um, even most individual investors understand a lot of these companies very, very well before even digging into the business just because a lot of them are consumer facing and they use them every day. Um, so all of that makes it very, very difficult to buy a stake in a business unless we're in some sort of massive stock market crash like a 2008 or a 2001, 2002 um, or, you know, uh, maybe a more extreme version of what happened in March. Um, all of those are conditions that would have to play out, in my, in my opinion at least. 
um, for Buffett to acquire large stakes in these companies, but these are probably some of the companies that he will be willing to buy. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. That is all I have for today. Um, if you think that I've missed anything here in terms of businesses that Buffett would like to acquire that are public companies, um, let me know down in the comments below. I would definitely be keen to hear that. But that's all for me today. So I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, really helps the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.